What's up everyone? My name is Steph Dietz and I'm a developer advocate at Vercel. Today I'm going to talk to you about why Svelte is such a powerful tool for both beginner and advanced developers alike. When you decide to do anything, one of the hardest parts is knowing where to start, and this is especially the case when it comes to learning web development. Where should I begin? It's a question that I've asked and have been asked countless times, and it's a tricky question to answer. Some will encourage beginners to learn a framework like React or Vue right off the bat, allowing them to get started with modern web development. This may allow them to build projects early on, as I like to say, earn as you learn, but it comes with the risk of not truly understanding what is the framework versus what's pure JavaScript. Others will die in the hill that you need to have a solid JavaScript foundation before learning a framework. After all, how can you understand how the virtual DOM works if you don't even know what the DOM is? However, this approach comes with the risk of sending beginners down rabbit holes with the complexities of JavaScript that have since been abstracted away with modern web development. Wouldn't it be nice if there were a middle ground? A way to create modern web applications while learning the JavaScript fundamentals? This is where Svelte shines. Because of its lack of boilerplate code and little Svelte-specific syntax, it feels just like vanilla JavaScript, making it a great way to get started with JavaScript fundamentals while also utilizing modern concepts. Unlike other front-end frameworks, the learning curve with Svelte is almost non-existent, but it doesn't sacrifice any key features. It can do everything other front-end frameworks can do, and more. To prove just how beginner-friendly Svelte is, let's take a look at a very simple Svelte counter component. Right off the bat, we see familiar tags like script and style, reminiscent of a basic HTML file. But this is actually a .svelte file, which is a superset of HTML. So if you know HTML and CSS, you can write with Svelte immediately and learn more as you go. Looking at the JavaScript written within our script tag, we see it looks just like vanilla JavaScript. No boilerplate code or special syntax. We simply declare the variable count and function handle click. Now let's look at the HTML, and this is where it gets pretty cool. With Svelte, any variable in your component script is accessible for markup as shown here with our button. There's no framework specific syntax for state management, no use state as we'd see with React or data as used with Vue. With Svelte, we simply declare a variable using let and it creates a reactive variable, re-rendering the component whenever these values change. Now let's look at how we use properties in Svelte. We simply pass a prop to the component wherever it's imported and get that variable as an exported let. This is great for beginners because it follows the way they should conceptualize modules in that we export what we want to access outside the component and import what we want to have inside of the component. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how beginner friendly something is if it doesn't have good documentation. The Svelte team managed to put together some of the best documentation I've encountered they plainly and efficiently explain everything you need to know about Svelte, and they even provide a detailed tutorial with step-by-step -step explanations, as well as a library of functioning examples. Svelte has an awesome REPL that allows you to start playing around and testing it out instantly without needing to create a new Svelte project. It even shows you the compiled JavaScript and generated CSS. So by now we can see that Svelte has created an excellent middle ground for beginner developers. It provides them with a tool to build modern web applications as they learn the JavaScript fundamentals without sacrificing their understanding. Svelte is beginner friendly, but this is not at the expense of functionality. Svelte offers all the features we expect out of a modern front end framework and introduces game changing features to the web development universe, making it a great tool for developers of all skill levels. For starters, it's actually not a framework, it's a compiler. As a result, it can be much more powerful than its predecessors producing increased performance with fewer lines of code. When it comes to both features and developer experience, Svelte has a lot to bring to the table. Since Svelte is a compiler and therefore does not require a runtime system to be loaded into the client, it comes with several advantages. The first is performance. No runtime means faster load times. This can be demonstrated by creating three nearly identical web apps using different frameworks and comparing their Chrome Lighthouse performance results. Here, we see that the app using Svelte ships the lowest amount of code, having a total bundle size of only 723 kilobytes, compared to 808 for Vue and 1,300 for React. On top of shipping less code to the client, it also executes faster. We see that Svelte performs slightly better than the other frameworks in all areas. This is, in part, due to the lack of virtual DOM. Rather than employing the virtual DOM, it takes your components and compiles them into a single vanilla JavaScript bundle that updates a DOM whenever state changes. This means that when your program is running in the DOM, no overhead framework code is injected in the browser, 
resulting in a faster website. In fact, Svelte is known as the disappearing framework because it's not present after the build process. This also means that unlike other front-end frameworks, the reactivity of Svelte is not tied to a specific API, making it truly reactive. Because the end result is so light and performant, it's easily bundled with existing projects. This means you can introduce Svelte into a legacy project without worrying about bundling a large library to get the desired features. You can simply swap out individual components at little to no cost. Another advantage that Svelte offers is its built-in features such as transitions, animations, and state management. This decreases the amount of necessary dependencies. For example, looking back at the counter component, let's say we want to create a counter store. We can simply declare our variables count in a JavaScript or TypeScript file and import writable from our built-in Svelte store module. And just like that, we can export count to be used across the app. It's just as easy to add animations and transitions. If we add an H1 tag that we want to fade in, we can do that by simply importing fade from Svelte transition and add transition colon fade to our tag. If we look at this in our browser, we see it created a beautiful fade in transition with almost no work done on our end. Svelte also has SvelteKit, which is a framework built on top of Svelte. Now SvelteKit is a topic of its own, but it's worth mentioning. You can think of it being for Svelte, what Next.js is for React. SvelteKit does all the heavy lifting of setting up an app with server-side rendering, routing, and more, just like Next. It's a serverless-first framework, introducing serverless adapters to ensure Svelte runs seamlessly on all platforms. Adapters are small plugins that take the built app as an input and generate output for deployment. Most adapters are uniquely optimized for a specific hosting provider. So for example, Vercel provides simple documentation to easily add the Vercel adapter to your project and deploy it to Vercel with the click of a button. Svelkit also provides features including automatic code splitting, simplified data prefetch, and more, making it extremely useful. I could go on and on, but I hope by now I've demonstrated how Svelte is an excellent middle ground for beginner developers to build modern web applications as they learn JavaScript without sacrificing their understanding. But also that it's more than just a good starting point. It's a powerful tool for developers at all skill levels to use. It is, in my opinion, the future of web development. I've barely scratched the surface of what Svelte offers, and I encourage all of you to give it a try if you haven't already. And the next time you're asked, where should I begin? I hope your answer is what's felt.